So <clears throat> today I will be talking about making virtual reality accessible. What usually comes with virtual reality? So first of all, there is headset, which is basically obvious for everyone. Uh, secondly, in the hands, we are holding the uh, controllers. And when we move them, we actually see that something is moving in VR. So we need to move controllers in order to, to interact. And additionally, uh, on the controllers, there are buttons. So we need to press them to interact with some objects in VR. So basically, this is in order to move in virtuality, we need to move in the real life. And what is the idea about the Walking VR project? What problems we may have? Uh, first is inability to hold the controllers, which can be case when uh, we have spastic hands uh, or after stroke or after some accident, uh, tetraplegia. Uh, we may have movement limitations. So for example, we may be able to operate with hands, but only to the uh, level of waist, for example. So this is with muscular atrophy, uh, with dystrophies or after stroke as well. Problems with using controllers. So we are not able to operate with buttons and it happens also with many cases. And the last thing is that we cannot keep the vertical position and we must be in the reclined position. And um, this presentation will be a little bit mixed. So before I was usually talking and showing slides, but um, with working VR, I created some videos and I found that they are actually the best to explain what it really is. So let me start. Virtual reality can be an amazing thing. It gives people the opportunity to experience things they wouldn't otherwise be able to, flying or traveling through space, as well as more down-to-earth activities such as just getting a good workout. It's not quite so easy for everyone though. With virtual reality, or VR, you use real-world movements to control your actions in the virtual world. This is a big part of what makes it so immersive. But what happens when your real-world movements are limited as a result of disability? It means some VR games and experiences are simply not an option for you. For example, a game may require you to turn around, but if you use a wheelchair, that's not so easy, especially if you're holding the controllers. And some disabilities mean you can't grip things firmly, so you may not be able to hold the controllers at all, or you might have problems using the buttons. Thankfully, there's a solution. Walking VR is software that allows you to adapt a VR environment so that limitations in your movement don't have to mean limitations in gameplay. It works on the Steam platform and integrates with the Steam VR environment, meaning it can be used successfully with almost any game. Let's look at four ways Walking VR can adapt an existing virtual reality environment to make it more usable by people with disabilities. The first is a feature called Virtual Movement. This is helpful for when you can't walk, but you can move your hands and hold a controller. To use it, you simply grab space with a button and then move or turn around. The second is controller position adjustment. With a condition like muscular dystrophy, for example, you might be able to hold the controllers, but not maintain them at the height required by the game. Position adaptation allows you to adjust the position in which the controllers are visible in the VR environment. So I will stop for a moment. On the left side, this is maybe not the most beautiful user interface, but you can see a player and this, uh, I think it's yellow, but I could be wrong, are the original controllers and the red ones are where exactly the he or she can see the controllers. So we can basically adjust position and rotation of controllers in arbitrary way. And actually this is very simple, but very powerful idea that makes sometimes a difference between allowing someone to play VR or not. Even for example, in the example on the game on the right side, if you can imagine that you cannot uh, bring this, I'm not sure what is the English word for that, to the level of eye and aim because you just 
are not able to bring your hands up, then it's quite natural that this is a problem. And this solution I've seen in many cases uh, is, is helping to achieve that. In the simplest case, this means showing the controllers higher in VR than they are in reality. But there are more advanced options too, like using rotation, or the distance the controllers are from your body. The boost part of this feature amplifies your physical gestures. This turns small movements in the real world into much larger ones in the VR environment, making it easier to pick up or throw virtual items. This can be particularly helpful if you have a limited range of hand or arm movements. Oh, and you can also adjust the controller position for each hand individually. This can be helpful where one hand or arm is weaker than the other. For those that have had a stroke, say, it means you can compensate for the weaker arm, enabling you to bring the virtual hand up into your field of view. This is something that can have a positive psychological effect. And there are more parameters that you can adjust besides. The third feature is gameplay with personal assistant. Some people can move the controllers well enough, but have problems with buttons and other tactile aspects of gameplay. Gameplay with personal assistant allows another person to assist the disabled player using a separate game controller. They can make helpful adjustments to the VR position and also perform button presses, making gameplay easier for the disabled user. So you can think about this like a co-play or like the name implies, gameplay with assistance. As you can see, therapist is holding the controller. He's using joysticks and buttons to, let's say, help the person playing VR interact with the environment. And I must say that, for example, uh, so then you can have playing together. And it's quite natural because then you start talking that, OK, let's go here. Can you grab this? OK, I have this. Now let's move there. And this is basically how it works. Finally, there is hand tracking. Many people have problems holding controllers, those with some forms of cerebral palsy, for example. You could attach the controllers to yourself in some way. This can be uncomfortable and they can be easily dropped. By using Walk in VR in conjunction with Kinect and potentially other tracking devices, you can interact with VR directly using your hands as controllers. Indeed, many games and applications can be played this way, including workout routines. Put together, all these features mean you can finally focus on the whole point of the exercise, playing the game. We're so excited to be able to open these possibilities up to a wider audience. Okay, and uh, I will show also a short gameplay with Beat Saber. Not sure if you know Beat Saber, but this is the number one for virtual reality. And I was once on the visit with my friends and we actually, we've been playing this game. And so let's see how it works. Like you can see this previous player, you may think that he have problems playing VR. But if you look on his result, he just did a combo with 24 hits in a row. What does it mean? That It means that he was able to cut the box in the game 24 times without any failure, right? So it shows again that uh, VR can be really played by anyone. So. What exactly Walking VR is offering? It's a uh, ability to play commercial games. That means games on the market, right? And what I have here, if someone knows VR, probably you hear about this game. Job Simulator, Angry Bird, Beat Saber, Fruit Ninja, Audio Shield, Box VR, Aquila Bird Simulator. And the difference between rehabilitation games is that the rehabilitation games perform on specific function, and they are often very simple. But commercial games are very addictive, they are engaging, they are break from the reality, they are interesting. And there are different types of games, music, training, or arcade. Technically, what is Walking VR? It's a software for PC. If you're gonna ask, 
can it work with a quest? The answer is not, unfortunately. But with Quest, you can connect it to PC and use it with, with PC, or you can just stream it over Wi-Fi. So this is software, and uh, apart from the VR setup, uh, we may need a Xbox controller for gameplay assistant, or Kinect for hand tracking. I'm also working to support other devices like Intel RealSense or Orbect, which are similar devices, very similar to Kinect. We have some collaborations, and this is one with the University of Alabama in Birmingham, and they has been recently published paper. I will not go through this paper, but there are some slides from Walking VR showing how it's used, and we see that they were indeed applying this in the hospital. I think in the results we can find some interesting information. Gameplay appeared to improve. Participants affect and alternate and motivate them to be more engaged in mobilization therapy, which is a great thing, I think. I have one more movie to show you, and this is the case study from the very first customer. We started in 2018, and they use it so far. Let's see. Avalon Active, czyli dział Fundacji Avalon, wirtualną rzeczywistość ma w swojej ofercie od października 2018 roku. Dzięki wirtualnej rzeczywistości podopieczni Avalon Active bawią się grając w gry jednocześnie, uczestniczą w rehabilitacji, którą sprytnie przemyca fizjoterapeuta. Pacjenci wykonują odpowiednie ruchy, muszą czasami zwiększyć jakiś zakres swojego ruchu. Chcąc sprostać wymaganiom gry, wykonują jakieś ruchy, pozycje, musi gdzieś dosięgnąć, coś złapać itd. Więc to wykonuje w, ty, w, ty, w tym świecie gry, ale jednocześnie ten fizjoterapeuta właśnie przemyca rehabilitację, prowokując niejako wykonanie danych ruchów. Po to, żeby ten trening wirtualny równał się z treningiem realnym z rehabilitacją. To jest taka komponenta, dodatek. Walking VR jest takim koniecznym uzupełnieniem terapii w wirtualnej rzeczywistości, jeżeli chcemy działać precyzyjnie z pacjentami. Nie wszystkie jednostki chorobowe, z którymi są nasi pacjenci, świetnie sobie radzą w standardowych parametrach gier. Niektóre dysfunkcje funkcjonalne naszych pacjentów wymagają od tego, do tego specjalnego dostosowania. I dzięki właśnie Walking VR jest to możliwe, bo zmieniając różne parametry możemy tak zasterować już w tej wstępnej fazie udogodnieniami w grze, że możemy podnieść jakiś kontroler do góry, obrócić go o 360 stopni, przesunąć w czasie przestrzeni, zwiększyć jego czułość, przez co pacjenci z dużymi deficytami ruchowymi tak naprawdę realnie mogą odbyć trening w takich warunkach, że gra jest specjalnie dostosowana właśnie dla niej. Taką możliwość daje właśnie Walking VR, że dostosowujemy indywidualnie dla danego podopiecznego warunki gry. Najczęściej korzystamy z gry Box VR, Audio Shield, Beat Saber, Fun House, Runaway. To chyba są takie naj, naj, najczęściej używane przez nas gry. Poza tym korzystamy z gry dostarczonej przez Walking VR. Jest to gra dla osób z dużymi deficytami neurologicznymi, skierowana, dedykowana dla osób, które nie mają dowolnych, zamiarowych ruchów. Wirtualną rzeczywistość używamy do pracy z praktycznie z każdym naszym pacjentem, z każdym beneficjentem. Są to pacjenci z przeróżnymi e, chorobami, jednostkami neurologicznymi, ortopedycznymi. E, są to na przykład stwardnienia rozciane, e, porażenia mózgowe, urazy rdzenia kręgowego, urazy czaszkowo-mózgowe, dystrofie mięśniowe, rdzeniowe zaniki mięśni, e, neuropatię, borelioza, no i wszelkie e, inne schorzenia jeszcze ortopedyczne. Zauważyliśmy, że pacjenci ćwiczący w wirtualnej rzeczywistości odważniej e, dokonują takich fizycznych postępów, w trakcie treningu w wirtualnej rzeczywistości, a także ma to przełożenie później w realnym świecie podczas funkcjonalnej rehabilitacji. Tak jakby ta wirtualna ćwiczenia w wirtualnej rzeczywistości z, dopełniają tą rehabilitację klasyczną, funkcjonalną fizjoterapię. Avalon Acti zajmuje się rehabilitacją osób z niepełnosprawnością ruchową, osób powyżej 16 roku życia, prowadzi rehabilitację dofinansowaną. Działania Avalonu Active mają na celu zwiększenie sprawności i samodzielności osób z niepełnosprawnością ruchową.
actually what we've seen this video it was kind of accessibility room we can say there is a room dedicated to vr it can be also the space in your facility i've seen also some customers they have like mobile vr there is a big monitor Kinect on the top of that, there is some part of it with a PC, VR, and they can move it around the room. This is also possible. This is actually related to how walking VR have a business model. Basically, the application is uh, free on Steam. It's free, but there is some banner every 10 minutes. You have to watch the banner for a few seconds, but it doesn't remove any features after some trial period. Then you can buy personal license to remove the banner. And this is for personal users. For commercial users, there are some additional features which we are working like individual profiles that you can, for example, save some settings for a particular player or additional cameras, which I mentioned. And it's based on the monthly subscription, right? So there is a monthly fee for using Wolki VR for other reasons for, for, for commercial or non-commercial uh, for uh, some research, other stuff like that. In summary, with walking VR, we have a uh, gamification of the activity. Like you could see on this video, it was not that the therapist just give a game to the person and say, okay, enjoy the game. I will sit and look how you are playing. They were very actively participating in the games. They are trying to use VR and use these games, which are not therapy games, but they try to use it for therapy because therapy you can do even with the ball. So what is the difference if this is a ball in VR or ball in the real life? Virtual reality accessibility. By working VR, we have also very important mission to make virtual reality accessible. I must say, it, and I don't know, proud of it. I would say it's very important to, to know that working VR is, is a software that is uh, used by um, people around the world. Once there was some problem with working VR and I got <laughs> actually, <laughs> it was, it, it is funny because then I got feedback from people who were writing me that something happened to working VR and uh, we need this to use it on daily basis. So. It's very important that a software like this exists. Finally, VR and accessibility room. I would like to uh, encourage everyone to have such a room in your facility. It can be uh, addition to VR, like on this case study. I'm not sure, I, I'm not sure if this was in video, but generally uh, if patient uh, is supposed to use VR, they generally have three or two or sometimes four regular sessions of therapy. And then they make one session of the PR. So this is something that is supposed to make some fun and, and engagement to the ongoing therapy sessions. We have to remember that uh, for many people, uh, they have a therapy for the whole life. So this is very important to have something. And that's it, basically. So before I ask for questions, so if you want to get in touch with me, if you would like to have such accessibility room or you would like to consult for your case to use VR in some specific case, you can write to me on this email or you can go to the website and there is contact form and you can contact me this way. Are Great. Thank you so questions? much. That was awesome. I liked the way you were using the video so we could see real demonstrations of what your technology does. As I said at the start, that's really what drew me to your project was the fact that you clearly showed in the videos that you showed in today's presentation as well, that you are working with people with disabilities and they're immediately benefiting from the technology that you're building. Greg, I'm curious, what would be the next feature you would want to implement or what's your next idea that you're excited about that you'd want to put into walk-in VR? Right now, I'm working on integration with other cameras. Like I said, uh, RealSense and also there are a few other Kinect alternatives. The feature which actually was recently added is recline gameplay. So actually, it's a simple story for that because there were two people only contacted me after our release on Steam and they say, hi, I have someone or I'm in the recline position. Can you help to do something? And 
I said, okay, yeah, you, you really need that. So I added this uh, ability to play in the recline position. Later, I realized on some meetings that, that there are more people using it. So actually, it was very, let's say, great thing to hear. I don't have any document for that, but I have this photo. The person is looking up physically, but in VR, you have preview of his eyes and he's looking forward and his hands also are directing forward. So this is kind of tricky. You, you could imagine this in real life if you have a window in 45 degree angle. So this was also one feature added recently. I was thinking also about, uh, but I don't have very high demand on this, but I was thinking about people who have very weak hands, like with the spinal muscular atrophy, not people who can't hold controllers, even though they cannot bring them high. But some people have very weak hands. And I was thinking that maybe we could use some devices like Leap Motion to emulate the controller position. Anyway, I must say that the, the software like working VR will never be complete and say it's over. But I have to say that all these features that you've seen, they come from experience. Each of the features was created because someone said, okay, Greg, I cannot play VR or I was trying to get someone to play VR and he was not able to, then I added something. When you are using these features, uh, they, they basically make a quite good uh, set of tools that can adapt virtual reality to many cases. That's great. Thank you. Your next question is from Daniel. He said, amazing, I'm relatively new to VR. Are there voice commands that can be used to navigate the VR space? Yeah, that was also one of the ideas, I must say. This is definitely uh, possible because I must say it's... Okay, so we have to remember where we are. If we want to do a VR experience, then there are a software that is doing voice recognitions from IBM or Google, and we can use it very easily and create our experience. But if we look what Walking VR is now, it's a software that is adapting existing games to VR. And we have to think how we can emulate controller and movement and buttons with the voices. I think there is some possibilities for that, but I haven't heard a lot of questions about it. It's definitely possible in many aspects, but I haven't got such inquiries yet. Right now, I'm focusing on making VR more user-friendly to make a new website with better descriptions. And by the end, in Q2 of next year, I also want to make a better uh, instructions video. Now I'm uh, showing mostly the concepts on YouTube, for example, and uh, Walking VR is, like I said, there are four or five tools. They are not just button that you press. They are a tool that you can uh, use with the patients. Basically, my focus now is making the community, everyone more aware that there is Walking VR. You can use it. How can you use it? Maybe one more thing to add is I often found that people who use it had some experience in the past. And they now see, okay, I had this experience. Now I see how it works. And yes, this is it. So I want to be more clear why I created this and how it works. All right, thanks, Greg. Next question from David. Great presentation. Looking forward to exploring what your software can achieve. Are there any plans for porting the software to wireless options like the Quest? Or is this too limited at this stage? The problem with Quest is that it's closed environment. I'm a little bit afraid of the of the fact that we have metaverse and we are basically limited to only one company. Unfortunately, on, on Quest or other platforms like that, it is not possible at the moment. But I have to say a good word about the Oculus that they added recently some requirements for each game before they allow this game to the store that it should comply with certain accessibility criteria. For example, I remember one especially 
which is that you you shouldn't be forced to lean down to the ground in order to pick up things. You should be able to pick up things from the ground in the seated position or that you should be able to rotate with just controller. Snap turn, okay, snap turn. So you just snap the finger to the right on the controller and it turns you by 30 degrees or 45 degrees. So they, they added definitively some features, but probably not as advanced as in Woki VR. But I would like to say that we, we shouldn't be afraid of using PC and VR in case of accessibility. I'm sure one day everything will be very simple and easy, but now if we have the way that is doing this, I'm not saying only walk in VR, if there is something else, then use something else and we can achieve this goal, then I think we should use it. And maybe in five years or something like this, there will be something else. But right now we have this and we shouldn't look for... Yeah, that's my answer. <laughs> We're going to take a question from YouTube now. This question is from Heather Dodds. Relating to spatial sound and even things like a smell o vision hot areas or expanded areas of VR research, has Walk-In VR thought about working in these new areas? The short answer is no. I haven't tried anything. I, I was focusing, as you can see, on the mobility. And this is mostly where VR is now also for the commercial applications and for the mass market, because Walking VR is aiming to make commercial games or existing games available. I'm focusing only on what these games are currently delivering to the people without any limitations, because there is nothing else right now on the market. I was not really thinking about it. This is maybe more uh, relevant to some research or university work. I just want people to play the games. That's something that I thought was so awesome about your application is that it works with existing applications and it's not, oh, only this application or that application. In theory, your application can help make the most popular applications that don't have these considerations work for people. We have the next question from Randy. This is about your commercial version. How many player profiles can you save individual profiles? I was not really thinking about this, but a lot. You can save as much as you want, unless you think about some very big, crazy number, but I don't think it's, it's the case. Next question. This is from Ren Tyler. Great work, Greg. It sounds like Walk in VR is used to modify existing products. Is it possible to incorporate Walk in VR into VR games and environments themselves. We are building a VR platform at work and I want it to be as accessible as possible. I want to clarify, we are not modifying the games. Walking VR is modifying VR environment. <laughs> this is very tricky difference, but if someone was playing VR, then you know that before you launch and when you put headset on, you can be in VR environment and not even launch a game. Like now I have PC turned on, but I haven't started, let's say, Microsoft Word. And what Walking VR is doing is changing the platform. It's working on the platform level, not on the game level. So for the game thing that they hand is up, but this is changed on the level of platform. And if you want to create environment with such features, then basically you don't need to worry about it. You do it like you would do it without thinking about this accessibility concerns because the walking VR is already making the VR environment accessible for you. I'm not sure if I explained this correctly. Uh, that's great. There's another question from Heather Burns. The link to the research study or university studies and the follow-up to the meeting, we can get a list of links that you recommend people read or review for what's been done with Walk-In VR. We can share that out yes. to everyone and also to the people that signed up that weren't able to attend today. There is no much at the moment, but I, I can definitely share. Great. Well, I'm going to say again, Thank you so much, Greg. We're honored to have you here today. And, you know, as mentioned, your work has already been presented at our meetup multiple yeah, times. Yeah, it was very nice so, to, to hear that. <laughs> we're very honored to have you here today with us. So thank yeah, you so much. I encourage everyone to 
contact me for his uh, VR accessibility room, right? 